The Glenn Campbell show was a show that Glenn was uncomfortable doing. He's a country boy. He sings songs. He's not a stand-up comic, but he had to do all of that. He was willing to do anything because he was such an open, nice guy. He's a genuine, really good guy. And he was so easy to direct because he would he listen and would do anything. You put him into a scene and you say, remember when Gypsy, the takes and the double takes, listen, look, and you'll win. Glenn would do all of that. And the best thing we did for him, he had to score on each show. Not only can you do a sketch and do a couple of songs to open the show with the rest of it, we had to put him into his comfort zone so he had the finale. He could make the finale work that would make he would score. Well, we had an audience, but the audience was basically 150 people or something. We had to make it look like thousands. So I was a believer in black. Nobody liked black in those days because black turned out gray. <coughs> Excuse me. And when the, when the pictures turned gray, um, I wasn't happy because it was, I wanted black. And so we put black rags all around the audience. We'd light, we'd pool light them. And so that we, when, when we can turn the video up and down with those lights, so it would make the black go deeper. And we'd put him in the middle of it. And so that there was always his people, the audience around him, surrounding him to give him a concert feeling, but he was in the camera well. <laughs> that was deep in the center of the audience. We'd pull, we'd pull the cameras out and we'd just push in a riser and that was his whole set for the finale, gave, giving him his comfort zone and so that he could end up on each show scoring big time by being close with the people. It was the Summer Brothers Smother Show, the name of it, starring Glenn Campbell. And um, I think we did 10 shows at CBS, Television City, and it was, it was an experience, and we had everybody on that show. We had The Cream, we had The Doors, we had uh, um, The Beatles, we had them all. And, 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 and it was and I, and Jefferson Airplane, and I mean, not only just rock groups, but we had major stars in, in, in the pop world, and the Kate Smiths, and, and everybody else, and uh, Pat Paulson, and it was a hot, hot show. It was on Sunday nights on CBS. And out of that came that uh, Tommy asked me to do, start the third season, which was their last season on some others brothers. And, uh, and so I, I, when I started the, the Smothers Brothers show, uh, Glenn Campbell was a piece of cake in comparison because there we got into very, a lot of controversies and we couldn't say hell or damn or anything like that on the show without it being cut out. And um, I remembered something I did on Gypsy Rose Lee and that when I, I said, when we were saying all the hells and dams, they want to make these jump cuts in the show. And I said, that's terrible. And I says, I tell you what, let me try something here. I have an idea. And so I went in there and I audio blipped the, the bad word and I put a tone. And so, hi, well, they, that was dirtier than the word. And of course, the Smothers loved it and CBS bought it. And so it became a little trademark in that regard. And so we, I got that trick on there. We ran out of money on some of the Smothers Brothers shows that they would use it all up on something and I had nothing to do. I mean, it was a Diane Carroll number or something one night and that we had nothing, no scenery. And it was, she was, it was going to do an elegant, beautiful number. I said, somebody go out and buy me two dozen white roses. And they did. And I, and I t got the roses and, I, and I, I said, I want some, some oil, just give me some oil. And I, and I sprinkled oil on the roses and I put them on some foam and I placed them two or three different places on the set and with one light on each. And I put her in the middle and did a rack focus between the flowers to her and it zoomed past the flowers. Outstanding number. It was an incredible number because we didn't have money. Back to the KGO days, the genius, forget those guys that have the money, the genius who can do it with no money. So it was all from that early training that came into play and they, they said, we're not gonna give you any more money. That was good. <laughs> But so it, it worked against me in a sense, but it, it worked out really, really nice. And, I, and the idea of experimenting on this mother's thing, because they liked to do different things. 
did a, did a number with Jefferson Airplane, and we had it color. We was color shows. But they, this, these shows were, when the cameras were there, they had big cables for the red, green, and blue. <laughs> they were like this. And I said, gee, that's great. That makes the picture. I said, well, I'm going to make something different for rock and roll. I reversed some of the cables. And so it, the picture was really wild because it was almost psychedelic. And so I did the whole number that way. That was another way. That went to the another time I wanted to do a slow motion. Nobody had slow motion. I said, well, let's do something that's crazy. And I said, I, ha I wanted to do a number. I was Nancy Sinatra doing a song. And um, I went this ballet, ballet dance, and was, I, but I wanted to do trailing images. And I said, it can't be done. He says, I have an idea. I said, I want you to book me. The, big, the most tape machines in town were at NBC. I said, I want to take this tape over there. Give me, get me an hour or two at 3 or 4 in the morning. And so I did. So I did. I took the, the, the number. I shot the dancer, Dark Infinity. But I kept the camera stationary on this dancer going through the thing and stuff like that and so forth and a couple of different angles. I took it over to NBC and took the tape into the first machine, stretched it across the room to the second machine, stretched it to the third machine, to the fourth machine, to the fifth machine, to the sixth machine. Took the video from here, the video from there, the video from there, and put them all together. So the image was going like this across the screen. And it was trailing images going all across this whole big dance thing. So <laughs> it's when you don't have the equipment. It's the idea of trying to be inventive and using the tools by knowing what, what this stuff can do, not how do you repair it, but how can you use it creatively in coming up with something different.